Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought this was an interesting topic to cover uh, concerning the fact that a lot of churches and religious institutions have been left out of the construction boom. Houses of worship have been left out of the construction boom. Uh, when you listen at some of the reasons why, uh, you'll say, okay, well, uh, there are a number of variable, variables being mentioned here. But I see it as something a little different. Of course, they mention millennials and, you know, thoughts are changing. People are having fewer children and just a number of different things. But what I see, I see that people are getting their eyes open. And they are starting to see these churches and so-called places of worship for what they are. Money grubbing, money grabbing. Okay. <clears throat> people have gotten their eyes open. And they are starting to see these people for who they are. That they don't really truly serve the Most High, our Creator. They don't truly love Him. They don't truly love the people. But they are there because they need a new jet. And they need a new mansion. Some of these big bishops and pastors have several jets and several mansions, right? I mean, one guy, I believe it was Jesse Duplantis, uh, was recently marked as saying that uh, the reason why Jesus Christ hasn't come back yet is because people aren't giving enough money. I said, these people are out of, they, they, they crazy. They are out of their minds, out of their minds. And you have people who will sit there and fall for that. So Jesus Christ hasn't come back or he's delaying his coming because people aren't giving enough? Okay, so anyway, to me, that is why you see this drop in the construction of new places of worship. Um, I want to take this time to thank the viewer who sent this to me. Thank you very much. This is a story that is definitely of interest to me, okay? Uh, they don't need to build any more of these buildings. They just don't. It's enough of them. Like, the thing that I'm going to let you listen to, they're going to actually explain how uh, there are so many vacant church buildings out here. <laughs> uh, I could think of a number of things they could do with these vacant churches. Uh, there is a, a guy in Portland, Oregon, I think. He bought an apartment building that was run down. Uh, a few de few decades ago and he fixed it up got the asphalt parking lot out of there and he has a permaculture uh, community where the people who live in the apartment building with him they all man that garden together so that is to me a better use of a church than these hell dens that they've become anyway I'm going to let you take a listen at uh, what is being said about the reasons why there is a drop in the construction of these places of, wor of worship. Um, after you take a listen to that, I will be right back. Construction spending in the U.S. has risen steadily since the financial crisis and as of June sat at a near-record annualized rate of $1.55 trillion. Delving into the data, the dollars spent in most categories of construction grew along with the overall economic expansion. The intrigue, one segment bucks the trend most noticeably. Construction of religious facilities has fallen sharply over the past two decades. Why it matters, construction spending provides insights into the economic growth of the U.S. and about what Americans are investing in. Similar to how the decline of brick-and-mortar retail stores doesn't necessarily reflect an outright decline in shopping, the way people worship is also evolving. By the numbers, Construction spending on religious facilities touched a record low annualized rate of $3 billion in June. This is a 66% decline from its $8.8 .8 billion record high in August 2003, according to census data. Meanwhile, construction spending on amusement and recreation facilities surged 42% from $7.7 .7 billion in August 2003 to $10.9 billion as of June. Educational buildings, office space, and sewage and waste facilities are among the categories with rising spend in recent years. Details, religious facilities in the dataset include houses of worship such as churches, mosques, synagogues and temples. 
they do not include certain buildings owned by religious organizations like college facilities and hospitals. Between the lines, according to Gallup, just 47% of U.S. adults said they were a member of a church, synagogue, or mosque in 2020. This was the first time ever this group wasn't the majority. Yes, but, Rev. David Schoen, a minister for the United Church of Christ Church Building and Loan Fund, follows church closures closely and tells Axios that the decline in construction doesn't tell the whole story. Schoen notes that worshippers are engaging in other ways, like through online portals. They're also meeting in schools and warehouses. There's a number of churches on the market that can be bought, Schoen adds. So there's not a whole lot of new construction. What to watch, millennials have been a little later in terms of partnering and having children and moving to the suburbs, Kermit Baker, chief economist for the American Institute of Architects, tells Axios. I think all that sort of feeds into the decision to get affiliated with a religious organization. Baker doesn't think trends will reverse as millennials get older, but says maybe they begin to stabilize. The bottom line, religious construction is a small part of the overall picture. But category trends provide insight into why aggregate measures of data are going up or down. Okay, so for me, it all comes down to supply and demand. Of course, they can give you all the, the statistics and the numbers and all of that kind of stuff. And you can just kind of roll all of that around in your head and say, oh. But it, it, it's a thing of supply and demand. A lot of people just aren't for spirituality they're looking for something spiritual a spiritual experience and so this is why people are tapping into all of these other different types of religions and things of that nature uh, once upon a time you can go to church and you can feel something you can get something but people are starting to have a different experience now where they're not getting anything they're just being entertained whatever they want to do live however they want to live and so those who still remain in the church buildings, they're content with that formula. They're like, okay, I can do whatever I want in this church. This is a have it your way religion, right? So those who pack these buildings, and that, I'm not speaking about every last situation or every last person because, or every last church, because there are church institutions that still have a level of spirituality or seeking of the most high. But many of them have just become places to entertain. Um, some of them are like country clubs or just gathering places where people can come hang out, fellowship and do all of that. But there is no God in the building. God is the world. That to me speaks to why there is a decline in construction of new churches because people are like, look, we just don't need it anymore. Too much foolery going on. Too many pastors out here tipping and dipping, ducking and hiding, slipping and gliding. Too many people out here living a double life, doing this, that, and the third, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, or people who serve the Most High with their lips, but their heart is far from it. So church has become a joke to the world. That's literally what it boils down to. Church has become a joke. People go there uh, to be entertained. And so the decline is usually an increase with every generation. Uh, but from what they're saying, millennials are just not having it. They're like, you know what? I'd rather be out here in the world and do my thing than to go in here and pretend like I'm doing something that I am not. That's what I see it as, right? If you're going to serve the most high, serve him. Of course, Nobody is perfect. Mistakes are made, but you don't wallow in those mistakes. You pick yourself right back up and you get as far away from those mistakes as you can. That, I mean, that's what the push is, right? So when we say these things, we're not saying that there is anybody perfect. We're just saying that people are using church as a reason why they can fall. Because if I fall, if I sin, if I mess up, if I do this, that, and the third... Uh, my church will pat me on my back and make me feel better with a spiritual band-aid. But that is not how it's supposed to be. If you're going to be in this thing, be in it. Don't be lukewarm. The Most High said, I would rather have you hot or cold than to have you lukewarm. Because if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. Well, anyway, that's my take on it. I am done with this video, of course. 
I am always interested to know what your comments and your thoughts are. So please feel free to leave them. But until next time. We hope you like today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share it like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.